you so much for accepting to give a talk at our online seminar. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I, I really appreciate the invitation. And uh, I miss Montreal, as I said, I wish that one day I would be able to visit in person again. Um, so today I'm going to talk about constant curvature conical metrics. So this is a, um, this is a, a series of recent joint works with uh, Rick Mattel, Bing Xu, and Misha Karpuhin. On, on the, it's, a, it's a classical problem of a, different, uh, a differential geometry problem that um, you can call it singular uniformization problem. And we brought in uh, some new analysis techniques and uh, we also brought in some uh, collaboration with complex uh, geometers and spectral geometers. And uh, hopefully um, we will see more insights and, uh, from now on. Okay, so uh, my my outline for this talk is the following: that I'm going to start with uh, the a uh, 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 um, background introduction, which is this problem: what what is this? And then uh, the next part, I will talk about the uh, the main result, which is deformation rigidity. And then uh, the last part will be more technical, which is um, the the, uh, we introduced this geomet new geometric construction called compactified configuration space. And from there, uh, this is geometry construction gives us more analysis tools to deal with this type of singular geometry problem. Okay, so to start, I'm going to talk about uh, the basics, the, the, uh, the background. So we'll start with a very classical uniformization, which is that for a given Riemann surface, then, um, you can uniformize it. And then that depending on the genus of the Riemann surface, you can, the constant curvature metric that you put in there will have different sign of curvature and it's a diff determined by the gauss bonnet So for example, here I drew a hyperbolic surface. Now, um, what happens is that we want to add in more uh, singularities. So that is, I'm going to take a, still a Riemann surface and most of the points will be smooth, except that there are a few mark points, a finite number of mark points, and each of them, I require them to near the point will be, will be uh, modeled by a conical singularity. So I'll explain in a moment what is a conical singularity there. But um, first of all, just, uh, just imagine that the usual, because the two dimension is really like the usual cone you can think of. And um, each cone will have an angle two pi beta j here. And um, now with this modified, uh, with a the singularity, then it changes the curvature that you will be able to put in there. And this is uh, the, um, this is this modified gauss bonnet theorem that's saying that uh, depending, on the, uh, depending on the angles you put in there, that if you put all the beta j to be equal to one, then this is a very special case that that's, if it's angle two pi, two pi, then it's smooth point then this case goes back to the regular gauss bonnet here. That, on the other hand, if the beta is not equal to one, then depending on whether it's less than, whether the angle is less than two pi or bigger than two pi, the, uh, it changes the, um, the, the curvature here. So in particular, you can imagine that even if we have a very high genus surface here, um, it, as long as I put enough cone angles with big, uh, with big cone angles, then I will be able to push it to, high, to, to positive curvature here. Okay, so this is a gauss bonnet And uh, this also tells me that for a given Riemann surface and a given set of cone angles, there's only one curvature that would work for this potential problem. Okay, now let me talk a little bit about what is local, local structure near the cone points. So again, this is because it's a two dimensional problem that um, everything is explicit, that you can use the basic differential geometry uh, knowledge using geodesic polar coordinates. You can write out locally what it looks like. So for example, for a flat conical metric, it's really just something that we can think of as a cone. And, um, and the local geodesic polar coordinates is written here that um, again, that when beta is equal to one, then this goes back to the regular flat metric, spherical metric and hyperbolic metric uh, and in, in polar coordinates. On the other hand, if beta is not equal to one, then this is where the singularity appears here. Now, uh, today we're mostly going to focus on spherical case. So that's the, the positive curvature case. So again, spherical doesn't mean that the underlying surface is a sphere. It can be higher genus. As long as the, the cone angles are big, you'll be able to push it to positive, positive, gene, uh, the positive curvature. 
Okay, so that's a local structure. And um, there is another way to, to write it using uh, this conformal coordinates. But the point is that, uh, again, you can see that it's really this beta that's, that's carrying the, uh, the, the singularity. Okay, now, so the first question people usually ask is, is there any constant curvature conical metrics? The answer is there are quite a bit that um, there are many ways to, to generate this. For example, you can start with a, a smooth uh, constant curvature surface, like a sphere or a, a torus or a hyperbolic surface. And then you take a branch cover of this. So for example, here, what I'm doing is I'm doing a, a, a double cover of a sphere. And then you lift up the, uh, uh, pull back the, the metric to this double cover. Then, what, uh, then it's still a constant curvature uh, metric and then, except there are two singular points, and each point, depending on the branch indices, it's going to give you a cone points with cone angle two pi times the branch index. So here, it's uh, the, the the thing above is still topologically a sphere, but has two cone points, each is angle four pi. Now the next. Uh, example is, uh, is slightly more non-trivial in terms of analysis, the so-called spherical football. So that is, you take a, um, so you take a sphere and then you take the North Pole and the South Pole, and then you take two meridian and then cut this piece off and then you glue the two sides. So this way you'll create two cone points at the top and bottom with equal cone angle. And um, not only you can, you can do it for a small cone angle, if you take many of such pieces and then just keep wrapping around until you wrap to the last, the, 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 the last, end, uh, the last edge and to, to, to match the first edge, then you will get a two pi alpha where alpha can be very large. So this way is another way to create this um, very special shape. And uh, the, the, um, the one very, um, one feature of the special shape is that it's very rigid. That um, if you look at this construction, that there's no way that you can push off the top or the bottom away from the North Pole and South Pole. That all the geodesics connecting the, the, the top and the bottom has to be equal lengths. That, and it, it's proved that it's, that's the only construction you can do. And, uh, that, and uh, well, that's, a, that's a case when alpha is not even integer. So the difference is that when alpha is integer, it becomes a branch cover, then it goes back to the, the previous case, which has more freedom. So it's, a, it's an interesting feature that when alpha is not an integer in this case, it's a, it's a very rigid construction. Now we uh, worked, we, so we extend this construction into a, a more complicated instruction called a heart. So this is using two spherical footballs, and then you cut out uh, a slit on the two footballs and then glue them together. Then this way you get a, a, a uh, topological sphere, but this time with four cone angles and uh, the cone angles are marked here. So this is uh, one of the examples that we studied uh, in extensive detail to, 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 show that, uh, the, to show that there are some features of this uh, spherical conical metrics that are not there before, uh, for hyperbolic or flat ones and, compare, and also because it's a large cone angle, there's at least one large cone angle here. Somehow this, um, this rigidity is showing up uh, there in, in this example, which I'll talk about more later. Okay, so hopefully um, with those three examples, I convinced you that there are some, at least some spherical conical metrics or, or, um, or in general constant curvature conical metrics. Now, the next thing is people usually ask that, why do you care about that? That why do you put conical singularities? So there are, um, one of the features of this object is that it's related to a lot of other uh, things. So first of all, the, there is uh, something called the magnetic vortices. So it's uh, solutions to some gauge sigma models on the Riemann surface. Now, um, it turns out that if you turn that gauge equation uh, using some transformation, it will transform directly into the Liouville equation that's governing this constant curvature metric. And moreover, the, um, the vortices, the, the, the singularities of the solution of the solitons correspond exactly to the conical singularities. So that's, that's what's the singular behavior there. And uh, the second thing is, uh, is related, but in a more general uh, type, which is there is this, this large class of mean field equations, which models electromagnetism. And uh, so this Liouville equation is again, one of them. And the, um, the singularities there, you can, you can view this as like a charge of some kind of electromagnetism. 
And then um, if you stack up a few of those uh, metrics into a, like a vector, then this becomes something called a TODA system. So that's a multi-dimensional system that's also being studied a lot. And um, then there are, so there, there has been a lot of progress on this Keller Einstein metrics um, with conical singularities. And uh, that was one of the, and one of the motivations was to try to smooth out the cone to study the smooth ones. And, um, and there people see that um, the, the same type of um, an analytical difficulty appears in the sense that uh, if the cone angle is small, it's relatively easy to deal with. But once the cone angle is bigger than two pi, some, a lot more difficult things appear. So that's also one of the motivations why we started and where we want to study this low dimensional version to see if any of the any of the models we can 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 be applied to higher dimensional things. And um, there's another thing that's not quite related to spherical case, but in the hyperbolic case, that uh, you can view this this uh, conical matrix as a bridge between two types of Riemann surfaces. So if you look at a hyperbolic surface, then um, a co hyperbolic cone, that if you let this cone go to two pi, then it smooths out. It becomes a, a smooth Riemann surface. On the other hand, if you let this cone point becoming the, the angle becoming smaller and smaller, then it just becomes, this, this cone becomes sharper and sharper. And eventually when angle goes to zero, it becomes a cusp. So this is a, the cusp hyperbolic metrics are the objects in this pointed Riemann moduli spaces. So you can view this cone, cone this moduli space of hyperbolic conical metrics as uh, the bridge between two types of moduli spaces, which is this pointed ones and the unpointed ones which are both studied a lot. And uh, the, the topology of the, the two types of moduli spaces are very different. So you can, you can view this hyperbolic conical matrix moduli space or something in between. So that's, um, that's some of the motivations that why we want to, why we're interested in this type of objects. And uh, another thing that's more like a feature of this object itself is that um, it can be approached in many ways that it's connected to many fields that, um, First of all, there is the, the PD approach, which is the main approach we're going to talk about today. So that is, you treat your solution, uh, you treat the, this uh, curvature, this constant curvature conical metric as a solution to a Liouville equation, but with singular boundary conditions, or you can say, uh, uh, but but with um, uh, but with singularities in the equation itself. And uh, a second way to deal with it that's very also very common is that you to use complex analysis that you treat this conical matrix as a special uh, type of projective structure. And then you can use developing maps and Schwartz and derivatives to characterize this. Then you solve this equation, which is, gives you a complex uh, valued ODE. And then people you will use complex methods to solve that. And uh, the third approach is that because it's two dimensions, so it's actually easy to, to visualize that uh, you can use synthetic geometry approach, which is cut and glue. So you just cut pieces out from a sphere, like spherical triangles and some or, or spherical quadruples, and then you glue them together. And uh, this way you can create uh, surprisingly many different examples. And so those are some, some, some of the reasons that why we are interested in this. And uh, now, uh, now let me talk about, um, let's see, okay. Now, let me talk about the, the, the main question that we're interested. Yeah, so the main question is the following, that uh, it's a uniformization question. So just like before, that in the classical uniformization is that if you're given a, uh, a conformal structure, can you find a unique constant curvature metric? Now, here it's uh, just slightly modified with more data. So here we have the following data, which is, first of all, a conformal structure given by the Riemann surface. And then we have uh, n points and, uh, and cone angles associated to the points. Then the question is that given this data, of course, this determines what kind of curvature you're looking for. Then does there exist a unique constant curvature conical metrics, metric on, on with this data? So, so this is a question. And um, this question has been answered in, um, in several ways. So the, um, to, to, to give you, uh, um, so to just to, just to tell you what's, uh, what's really there, I'll divide this question into four types with using um, curvature K, which is minus one or zero or one, and uh, angle beta, which is all small or some of them is large. All small means that all the angles are less than two pi. Then this um, combining the result by Heinz, McCowan, Trianov, and Luantian, they the following three blocks are solved. 
So this is that if um if the if the so first of all, if the uh, the Gauss Bonnet is is asking for hyperbolic or flat metrics, then it just uh, it it just there is a unique constant curvature metric. So that's it. I mean, for flat ones, there is there is a scaling, but uh, taking out the scaling, that's the only thing you have. And for for the uh, for the positive curvature case, you need to be you need to have the angle to be all small, and moreover, the angle it actually has some more constraint uh, has some uh, has one combinatorial const uh, constraints. But with that, then um, then, then the, the, the result by Triana and Lu and Tian show that there is a unique constant curvature conical metric that uh, no matter where the cone points are, that uh, you have existence and uniqueness. Now the so just like in the usual uniformization case that once you know how to uniformize within one single uh, conformal class, you want to understand the moduli space, which is when you vary the conformal class, what happens to the curvature, what happens to the constant curvature metric above. And then the, the classical uh, moduli space theory is to say that, that while well, the, 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 the uh, metric will move smoothly with respect to the conformal structure, and that is a moduli space and it is smooth most of the places. That so um, similarly, there is a story here that for the um, for for here and here, really that um, for the three blocks here, that um, the result of Mattel and Weiss, they showed that there is a well-defined uh, moduli space. So first, uh, their their result was only stated for uh, angle less than two pi, but it can be applied to hyperbolic case with even large angle. So that uh, you can show that there is that the moduli space is smooth in the sense that uh, the, the metric actually moves smoothly with respect to the conical data, which includes uh, the, the uh, hyperbolic, uh, which includes the conformal structure, the cone angle and the cone positions. And uh, this is a dimension, the, the, the total dimension of all the parameters. So that's the story for the three blocks. Now, of course, uh, you will be asking what's, uh, what's, left, of, what's left? Well, there is one block left. Now, it turns out that the story for the, the block that's left is very different. That um, the, so the remaining case is when um, we are asking for a positive curvature and then at least one of the cone angles is greater than two pi. So it turns out that uh, very different from the previous three blocks that uniformization fails. Uh, it's, it's like, it, it's a disaster in this case that, uh, that uh, everything fails. So first of all, um, existence fails in the sense that uh, there are constraints on the conformal structure, on cone angles, and sorry, on, on compositions, cone, cone angles, and conformal structures. And um, so currently, we still don't have the whole picture of what's the constraints. Currently, the combining all the results, we we know in some cases what are the constraints. And then um, the 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 next thing is that even for the admissible. Uh, um, data for admissible um, conical data, the uniqueness usually fails. That um, first of all, there are examples by Chen Wang, which she showed that there are, there are cases when you're given just one set of conical data, you have a whole family parameterized by a, 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 a real parameter family of metrics just for the same conical data. And then um, there are results showing that in generically for large cone angles, the number of solutions is not one it's going to be some number that's, that's positive, uh, that's bigger than one. And um, currently the conjecture is that uh, gen for a generic set of admissible con conical data, the uh, number of solutions should be discrete or hopefully finite. But however, uh, currently the, it's not, uh, we, we don't even know if the generically the set of solutions is discrete at this point. So that's um, so that, but in general, we expect that uh, it's going to be not going to be unique. And then uh, now, uh, similarly, are there, yeah. are there example where there's an infinitely many uh, solution? Um, so the infinitely many solution currently still is in this reducible metric case. So that is not generic because it's a co-dimension two phenomenon. That in that case, you can construct explicitly there's this a real parameter family. For rest of it, so far, people only, the, the, the one that do, they have a control of the number of solutions is all finite. And uh, um, it's, it's some number that, deter, that depends on, on the cone angles in some sense. And it's larger when the cone angle is larger. Yeah. So the, in, 
I mean, there are no, there are no um, other evidence to show that if, say, if the metric is in the irreducible case, that uh, uh, it can be infinity. The expectation that it shouldn't, but nobody knows how to prove it. Um, right. Then, so for for the deformation, then, um, so I showed recently that um, it, it uh, for for a for a metric in this case that you can't just move it freely with respect to the, the conical data nearby. That there are constraints with respect to the cone points positions, for example. And then, um, so this is a, just a, a very incomplete list of um, things related to this constant spherical metrics with large cone angles. As you can see that um, there are many ways to attack it. And um, the picture is getting more and more complete, uh, but we still don't know in, in many information there. So um, now what is our approach? So our approach is uh, we're not working on some specific um, uh, specific example, like specific, specific genus or, or angle, where we want to attack it in a more generic way that we want to understand. So if you're just taking an arbitrary spherical conical metric and what's, what's happening nearby. Now, um, so, on, on, uh, so we give um, some understanding of this local structure of the moduli space. And uh, so first of all, the first, uh, so this is, a, uh, this is a vague description of the result is that the first part is that uh, the local deformation, whether it's, whether it's smoothly parameterized by, um, by this uh, conical data or not, is, um, is determined by a spectral description, which is by this, which is a t whether two is an eigenvalue of, this, um, of the Laplacian of the metric that we're trying to deform. So here, FR means Friedrich uh, uh, um, extension, but that's just uh, um, some, some self adjoint extension. But the point is that um, it's completely determined by the, um, the, the metric itself at this point to whether, whether it can move freely nearby or not. And then the second thing is that uh, when it cannot move freely nearby, uh, what happens is that we can put it into a, into a larger space so that it can be desingularized. That this moduli space at this part will be singular, but if you put it into a larger space, then it can be viewed as a some kind of manifold with corners inside a bigger thing. And uh, here, the the way to enlarge the space is add more coordinates by splitting cone points. So you put it into larger space. So that's basically our that's our main results of understanding what's the local structure. And uh, uh, now let me say a little bit about uh, what's our approach. So our main approach is to solving a nonlinear PD, which is this a singular Liouville equation here. So this equation is really, um, it's, a, it's a classical conformal structure equation. That's a conformal chain transformation equation that if you start with a model metric G0 and you ask for a constant curvature metric to be in the same conformal class as so e to the 2u times G0, then this is the equation that's uh, relating the, the two Gauss curvatures of the of the model metric and the constant curvature metric. And here uh, in our case, K will be mostly one. Then we're solving this equation. Now for, uh, if it's smooth, then, then that's a regular, uh, that's a classical uniformization. But the point is that uh, this GCC, this G constant curvature metric, uh, the constant curvature metric has conical singularities. So it either, you can either put it into this conformal factor or put it into this G zero. So I'm not gonna tell you, talk too much about it, but the point is that you have to put the singularity somewhere which means that a singularity will show up somewhere in this equation. So either it shows up as a boundary singular boundary condition or shows up in this uh, model metric, which has a model, which has a singularity for the Laplacian. So our approach is that we treat this as, uh, we're going to treat a singular Laplacian here because this, is a, um, this, is, this type of conical structures has been studied by microlocal analysis for a long time. And there are, there are general theory that you can deal with this kind of Laplacian. So that's uh, our approach to, to, to solve the singular equation with a singular operator. Now, uh, just to give an idea that what we're doing here, I'm going to um, draw this picture. So this is, um, uh, so I'll explain a little bit what's, what this picture is. So the picture is the following that um, I'm going, so we're going to, first of all, fix the angles from now on. And uh, I'm going to only care about the, the solutions where I'm varying the cone positions. 
Okay. So I want to see that I start with a G0 and if I move the compositions, can I get also um, constant curvature metrics nearby? So first of all, there's a huge space which I don't care if it's, a, if it's a constant curvature or not. And then there's potentially a slice here which has a constant curvature. Now I want to see whether the slice is a, is a nice slice or not. And uh, so it can be, this, this slice can be realized as the, um, the, 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 the solution to this curvature map. So this curvature map is just the, the one that I described that if, if, this, um, if the right-hand side is equal to zero, then this means that it's, it's a constant curvature. So the question is, can I view this map? Can I solve out this equation to get the slice? And more or I want, this, I, I hopefully I can, I want to uh, parameterize the slice by the following projective map, which projects to the compositions, which is here. So that's, uh, that's why I put, a, uh, put another projection direction here. Okay. But the point is that uh, in general for this picture to, in order for it to work, you can, and if you, if you know some, if you um, deal with this kind of perturbation problems, this picture is familiar in the sense that uh, you can, you basically just need to know at this point whether you have a nice linearization or not. Now, the linearized operator here is this Laplacian G0 minus two because this is the linearization of this operator. So the, if this operator is nice, then this is a standard picture of implicit function zero. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Now, which means that if this Laplace, if this operator is, is invertible, then, which means that the two is not in the spectrum, then implicit function theorem applies. And then you, we can just get this nice picture where there's a nice slice, which is parameterized locally by a neighborhood in, the, in this parameter, which is compositions, which will tell us that uh, indeed nearby, you can vary the metric smoothly and it's completely parameterized by the positions. Now, the, but of course, the, 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 that's not so nice for a reason. The reason is that uh, we'll have a problem when two is actually in the spectrum. Okay. So the first of, uh, so, um, well, let me, let me see, if I, have, mm, I don't have much time. Okay, let me, uh, let me skip this slide. Uh, I'll just say that, so basically this slide is to say that you can indeed real, um, talk about this linearized equation and then the kernel of, which is this eigenvalue two, will indeed create a problem for both injectivity and surjectivity in that point, and that's going to be a trouble for us. And um, now the question is, does that actually happen? So it turns out that, um, first of all, when all the cone angles are less than two pi, that it doesn't happen very often. And in fact, it's uh, the, only, the only time it happens is, is with the spherical footballs that I talked about. So, which also, which is also uh, showing that why the spherical football it has this uh, weird rigidity compared to other things. So here, um, the, the way to prove it is people used Faulkner's technique or integration by parts to show that two is actually exactly the lower bound of eigenvalue for spherical conical metrics if all the cone angles are less than two pi. And you only hit two when it's a football. So that's, which is also why that, um, and also, while it's true for hyperbolic and flat metrics, they just don't hit two. In that case, the, the, the sign of Laplace is, is good. So, uh, in, in, so this also shows that why the three other blocks are so nice in terms of analysis, because well, the, the linearized operator is a nice um, invertible operator and everything applies. Now the question is, so unfortunately, when at least one of the cone angles is bigger than two pi, this kind of Bachner technique wouldn't work anymore just because you're doing integration by parts. And uh, when, you are, when you have a large cone angle, this means that uh, the, the function you're going to integrate is actually going to be more singular near cone points. And then integration by parts just wouldn't work anymore. That you'll get an infinity greater than equal to infinity case, which doesn't tell you anything. And um, in fact, this, this lower bound two is, does not hold here. There are many examples to show that you will be able, you, you, this two is going to be in the middle of the spectrum and you'll hit two many times. So for example, that uh, footballs with, with large cone angles or this heart that I constructed was gluing two footballs or gluing many footballs together and uh, or branch cover of standard sphere, all those things has two in the spectrum. And uh, so, um, so this is hopefully convincing you that we do have a problem when large cone angle occurs. And uh, moreover that, um, so, so that's, this is a motivation of some of the, uh, my recent work to find where 
where this item value two actually appears. So the first uh, uh, the first result in this direction is that I showed uh, was being sure that um, there are there is a class uh, of metrics called reducible metrics, which is essentially which is saying that its monogamy is in some reducible class, and essentially it's just saying that the metric has some kind of symmetry. And then this whole class, they all have this two in the spectrum. And in fact, this two can be can be used as a spectral condition to characterize the reducible monogamy. So it's actually an, an uh, it's an it's almost an if and only if condition. Now then, there's more recent work with Michel Kapruhin, and that we used harmonic maps techniques to show that um, in fact this uh, this this type of reducible metrics can be can be viewed as um, some kind of some kind of solution to harmonic maps to sphere. And in fact, harmonic max to sphere produce such eigenfunctions. So there, so we actually give an algebraic description of uh, the ex existence of such eigenfunctions. And uh, moreover, we use the um, explicit construction of deformation of harmonic max to, maps to sphere to show that you can create a, a, a conical metric with arbitrary large dimension of eigenspace with eigenvalue two. That as long as just basically, so the, basically, uh, the, the degree of the harmonic map is, is bigger, then the dimension will be bigger. So, so, so this is showing that this two can occur many times. So um, now, um, let, me, let me skip that. So, so here, um, I give two examples where uh, this two appears. As I said, the first example is this. Uh, is this uh, uh, spherical football. And uh, the second example is this uh, uh, glued foot spherical football, which is a heart. So in either cases, you can see that this, uh, this eigenfunction too there uh, plays an important role in terms of its deformation or its, uh, its uh, non-uniqueness. So here, for example, that um, in the in the first case for the for the, the spherical football, if you compute the um, the eigenfunction here, which can you can do it explicitly by separation of variables, and then compute its complex gradient vector field, then you will see that this gradient vector field is um, pushing towards here. So it's it's just this conformal dilation field that's pushing everything towards um, the, the from north pole to south pole. So which effectively is say. Is a, and, and, and if you integrate that, you'll get this family of different morphisms, like the usual different morphism pulling um, the, the, the North Pole to South, to south Pole this, uh, on, on sphere. So this is, a, this is a, a way to show that there are non-uniqueness here. And uh, now another thing is that um, here in, in this example here, you can do the same thing. And uh, the, 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 the good thing is that the eigenfunctions on, on both sides, they actually glue together. So the glue together to be a nice eigenfunction on this heart. Then uh, using this example, we show that A, indeed it generates uh, a family of solutions and B has rigidity that, um, that I actually show that if just by using cut and glue, you'll be able to show that this family is rigid in the sense that the only thing that can happen to this family if you keep all the cone angles to be, to be the four of numbers here is that uh, you can uh, move this, this top points up and down. So you can you can you can move the seam. That's the only thing that can happen. You cannot move, say, say left or right, for example. So this is a, so this is one way to show that um, the existence and uniqueness are 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 are, are uh, not true, and uh, an explicit way to show that it's related to this eigenfunction of eigenvalue two here. Okay, so. Um, now I just want to uh, give a schematic picture that that the, the first picture is this nice um, implicit function theorem picture. Now the next picture, um, so I, it's a it's a more complicated picture, but I would I just want to give a a, a more schematic uh, explanation using a circle. So the so I'll give an example here that just, so basically if we are staying on the left, well, if we are if we're at this point on the right, sorry, on the right, and then um, if we only have x direction as our coordinates, then the differential here is going out, and this is a bad differential in the sense that it doesn't characterize the circle. And I will need a good differential in this direction, which is a y direction. 
Now, so this is essentially what's happening in this picture here that this, uh, this, this, this slice might be shooting out of the original parameterization. So I'll need to go out, which means that I need to introduce more directions. And uh, now you might want to ask that, so what happens if I know that the good direction, the tangent direction is actually along this direction? Now I'll give you another example, which is on top of the, the circle here that in this, on, this, on top of the circle that this dx is already a good differential. However, if I only have x coordinates, then I will only be able to see a point here. I won't be able to see the circle. So this is a, just to say that potentially what ha could happen is that this projection down is tangent to the original coordinates, but the, the actual solutions are actually out. So this is a, so we still need this y direction there. And this is the, the y, mm, so this is the y direction that we include, which is the splitting. So the idea is that uh, the original co just compositions itself by moving com points is not enough. That um, in many cases, we'll need to include the splitting of com points, which has more directions here. Okay. So that's um, the, basically the picture we have. And um, to make it work, unfortunately, that uh, it's, not, uh, it's not so algebraic that uh, and everything's singular. So in, in order to set it up, we need to work on the space because the space is not, is not, um, is not so nicely set up. So that's why that's a, a lot of work where a lot of work is. Now, uh, but um, before we go on, let me just say that um, our, so our main theorem is the following trichotomy theorem, which is the following that, so I start with a spherical conical metric and then um, there is this number n, which is completely determined by the cone angles. So you just sum up the cone angles basically. And then the first uh, result is that um, the, the, the multiplicity of the eigenspace with eigenvalue two is actually constrained. That it can be at most two n. Then there are two cases, so by, it's a stability condition basically. And there are three cases, whether a is with it when there are no eigenfunction at all, B is that it has some eigenfunction, but not maximum dimension. And C is that it's maximum dimension. So our main result is that in three cases, well, in three cases, it corresponds to different scenario of, uh, of, um, uh, of um, deformation. So the first is that if the eigenvalue has no eigenvalue too, which is this implicit function theorem case, the nice case. And then we show that there is a smooth neighborhood parameterized by compositions. And well, in this case, because it's fixed cone angle, but if you can include cone angles and conformal structure without any problem. So it's a, just a, the nice case. And then the second case is a partial rigidity, which is that if you have some eigenvalue, but uh, some eigenfunction, but not the maximum dimension, then you still have some space to wiggle. And uh, then our show, we show that there is a 2n minus l piece of manifold, which is some version of manifold that uh, parameterizes the compositions of nearby points. So that you have some space to go, but the point is that you might need to split com points in order to get the space. And the last case is the so-called complete rigidity. That is, if you hit the maximum dimension, then this point is a singular point in the sense that you don't have any smooth neighborhood any nearby. So I should also say that currently with all the, all the examples which, uh, we found is in case one or case two, we haven't seen any spherical conical metrics with, with, the, the, with the maximum uh, dimension of eigenvalues yet. So we don't know if this three actually exists or not. Okay, so that's the result. And um, now uh, I still have let's say five minutes. Um, so, um, so I said that uh, this picture that we, we said, including y is not so simple because it's not so algebraic. You need to do analysis. And uh, the analysis we introduced is the following so-called blow up analysis or scaling analysis. So I, I won't talk too much about it, but I just want to show you a picture. What's, uh, what's happening here is that you uh, introduce this blow up model near the con collision, which in terms of picture kind of looks like the sun hat picture that uh, you introduce this, uh, this new uh, bubble to to blow up, to to do blow up analysis near the collision, and then um, so this type of um, behavior is very um, in some sense it has, has seen in, in, in many places, and um, the the point is that um, that geometrically this we introduce a bubble in the space, and an analytically we introduce polar coordinates in this area to do analysis. And of course, when there are multiple scale of bubbling, then you have a bubble tree construction. 
So that's, um, and there are this kind of iterative singular structures as seen in many places. Um, and um, now the, the result is that uh, one can use this kind of compactified configuration space, so we, we call it that uh, this is a kind of geometric construction, but introduces new coordinates to, to do analysis. And the point is that this new coordinates turns out to be the coordinate, to be the, uh, the, uh, the good coordinates to do analysis when, when there are cone points merging or are splitting. And uh, our first result on this direction is to show that on this resolve space with this bubble tree construction that uh, you can characterize um, this family of constant curvature metrics when the, when the cone points are merging. And um, now the first, so we first dealt with the, the first three blocks that I talked about. So that's hyperbolic or flat or spherical with cone angle less than two pi. And uh, the point is that uh, we, will, we are able to show that the solutions are poly homogeneous on the space, which is basically a maximum smoothness you can expect in this case, which is more or less like full Taylor expansion, but the powers might include non-integers. So that's the only difference. And the non-integers are determined by the cone angles. So um, now the point is that um, we are able to solve the curvature equations uniformly with using the new coordinates that are introduced in this geometric construction. Now, if you just solve one of the equations like that with fixed parameter, that, that's just uniformization and that's done 30 years ago. Our approach in this, now our contribution for this part is we show that you can solve this family of equations where the parameters are actually degenerating and you're able to construct, uh, to control the solutions uniformly when even, even when the parameters are degenerating. And um, then moreover, we show that there, are, there is nice expansion and the leading term is exactly this geometric picture that we showed earlier when you have the sun hat thing that's coming up. And then um, the, the next thing is that we apply this machinery to understand the big cone angle case, which is, which is what I said that uh, we, we want to introduce this more y variables. That's how we introduce the y variables. And then, um, the, so I do want to talk about that. Um, so in the end, what we showed is that uh, this local, local deformation is completely determined by the eigenfunctions, actually. That um, the, first of all, uh, we know that splitting creates extra dimensions, which fills up the co kernel, which is why we're doing this. And then um, moreover, we showed that the direction of admissible splitting or admissible deformation is completely determined by the expansion of the eigenfunction. So uh, the point is that uh, each eigenfunction will give you some kind of a vector by local ex local expansion, and then those vectors will give you the the will, and the, the tangent of the splitting directions are actually given by vectors that are orthogonal to to those, all those vectors. So that and uh, that's that's why that's that's completely determined by the eigenfunction. And moreover, you can immediately see that well, when we have more eigenspace, which means that you have more constraint on B, then there are fewer vectors that are complete orthogonal to everything. So that means that there are more constraints on the direction of splitting. So that's why we have this, uh, we have this constraint on, on the dimension of local deformation. And uh, moreover, that the, um, this whole thing that how do you get the splitting directions from those vectors is completely algebraic that uh, you can, by solving uh, some kind of polynomial equation. And so well, I'll, I'll finish with the one last example, which is this heart that, uh, so we call it open heart surgery that um, you can find um, a way to completely determine the deformation direction near the heart. Um, so for this one here, I'm going to uh, assume that alpha and gamma are the same and they are all less than two pi. So I only need to split up one point, which is the four pi point. And then you can, using this algorithm that I described earlier, you can uh, expand, uh, obtain an expansion of the eigenfunction near this point, which will tell me that um, there, there, the, what's the admissible splitting direction. And then you can see that um, either you can split this way or this way. Now, it turns out that only this way is allowed, that this is okay, but this is no. That, um, and in fact, for this, this you can construct by hand, and also for this one you can compute it by by just this. Suppose there's such a shape, then you'll you'll, you'll be able to uh, split it into six pieces of spherical triangles. Then by spherical trigonometry, you'll be able to show that this does not happen. Just it cannot happen. So that's um so that's uh, but uh, but uh, for our algorithm, you'll be able to in theory, if you know the eigenfunctions, you'll be applied you'll be able to apply to more complicated shapes to determine all the local deformation. 
Okay, so that's um, all I want to talk about and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, 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 probably there are some questions or, or remarks from the audience. Um, personally, I have one question coming back to, uh, if you could uh, show us mm -hmm. again the trichotomy, uh, the, the yeah. uh, main, main theorem. So, yeah. so when you were saying that you had examples, uh, so did you mean that for uh, each L uh, between one and two N, you are able uh, to, to construct uh, for, for the partial rigidity uh, one, one example, this is what you mean? Um, so or what just I mean like you found exam one example where L is different of zero? Right, what I mean is that we have, uh, well, there are more, more than one example that where L is between one and two N, but I mean, I, 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 I cannot say that I, we found an example for L that's, that's everyone between one and two N. Okay, so there, for example, I mean, for, for um, so first of all, for this heart that I, that I drew earlier, this is L equal to one. And, uh, um, and in that case, um, well, N is bigger than, than two actually. So, so it's one of them. And then, uh, then with this recent work with Misha Karpuhin is that we showed that you can construct a, a large uh, dimension L here. But again, it's, uh, that, and in fact, you can construct arbitrarily large L, uh, but th th this L is still not reaching 2N. And, and when you're constructing this L, you're, you're varying the, the, cone, the cone angle. So therefore this N is changing at the same time. So, I, so, so uh, if we're asking that whether you can actually go from one up to two n for each, each of them, I don't know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Probably there are other questions. Uh, Frederic wants to ask a question. Yeah, so in the, 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 your last slides, uh, you, it seems to indicate that when there's an angle that split, uh, the, say the total angle is not preserved. So this four pi angle becomes two angle of three pi's. Uh, that so, yeah 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 yeah. So um, here, first of all, when when you're splitting, um, what's 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 preserved is the following. So if you're splitting beta zero to two point beta one and beta two, the splitting preserves the following: beta zero minus one equals to uh, beta one minus one plus beta two minus one. That's a, that's a preservation. So this is a so it's kind of like in this Gauss Bonnet, this number shows up. So you're preserving the excess of, or the difference with two pi, that's preserved. So for example, here that uh, in this case, it's this beta is equal to two and uh, it's split it into uh, three halves and three halves here. So the, the, the picture that, uh, that I usually like to show is that, uh, so there's a such, basically the splitting, you can view this as you start with a, with a piece of say a large triangle uh, I mean, you glue this two piece of triangle into a cone here, and then you can cut out um, a piece here. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to use this to say that this is this part is cut out. So I originally I have this angle beta zero. If I cut it out, I'll get a beta one and beta two. So that's basically kind of like the splitting that's happening here. That. I mean, one way to, to view this as splitting is to view this as an inverse of a process of merging that, so you just have, uh, you have this two cone angles here and they're getting closer and closer. Eventually when they merge, you will see it after beta zero. So that's, a, you do, they were getting, I mean, you're, you're, if you're making this line smaller and smaller. And in this process, if you again, just compute it, you'll see that it's this relation that's preserved. So, so you need to, to for a uh, cone angle to, to split, you need to have an excess of two pi. Uh, that's right. That's why I only split uh, cone angles that's greater than uh, greater than two pi. Yeah, or smaller okay. ones so, you don't split. And so in this example, you, you were saying that alpha and gamma are small. So in particular, you need at the bottom that alpha plus gamma is, is less than- It's, uh, also, than it's also less than two pi, yeah. I mean, for my calculation, just to be, that's the case that I, I know that there is only one eigenfunction that's here. So I, I know that the only thing I need to do is, is here. Yeah, for larger cases, I'm not sure. I mean, the, the major problem is that I don't know what are, if there are any other eigenfunctions. In general, we expect that when, when angles are getting bigger, there are more and more eigenfunctions. So and I cannot compute it. <laughs> 